You are now listening to Nailed It, the orthopedic surgery podcast. So if we, you know, if you have a patient and they have, you know, you have a young athlete and they have that Jones fracture is displaced and you decide to fix it. Um, what is your uh, proposed, uh, you know, I guess your technique, you know, do you do percutaneous? I know there are a lot of different techniques, some tension band or some talk about putting a plantar plate that I've seen in, in different studies. And then why, what size screw you choose? Do you choose cannulated versus fully um, versus solid screws? You know, what, what, what can you kind of give us a, a, a rundown on, you know, just some of the technical tips? So, um, you know, my, my first step. So, so I, yes, if I have a zone two or three um, fracture that I'm going to, to fix my go-to um is, is usually a, um, you know, a intermedullary screw. Um, that's, that's not cannulated. That's, that's solid. Um, my, with regard to, you know, technique, I'm, I'm choosing, I'm doing a screw, you know, what, what do I do? Or how, you know, how do I proceed? You know, my first step in these procedures, really, I use the, the, um, the fluoro machine basically as a, as a, as a table, um, you know, as the OR table. Um, and I get a perfect images and, and, and draw out the trajectory, the exact trajectory of the screw where I want it to be um, on both the oblique and the lateral. Um, I, you know, I make sure that, um, you know, quote unquote, high and tight. So, you know, medial enough um, and um, high enough that, that I have the right trajectory. Um, draw those lines and where they intersect, you know, go about, you know, centimeter proximal or half a centimeter proximal, proximal make a, a little uh, incision and, you know, um, spread, 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 you know, down, down to bone, making sure that, you know, I'm avoiding sural nerves, sural nerve branches, you know, um, perineus, um, brevis and, um, you know, finding, finding the spot as opposed to just kind of like, you know, perking it in there, um, make a tiny, make a little incision where you kind of drew your perfect lines. Um, and then being really, you know, meticulous and careful about, you know, that, that K wire insertion, um, and, and direction, because that's the whole case. Honestly, like you, you get, you get that trajectory, you get it on point, like the first shot it's, it's a sawbones after that. It's, it's an easy, it's a really an easy case, but it's very, that's the most technically challenging part of the case, getting, getting perfect imaging, getting perfect trajectory, getting perfect starting point, um, you know, on position of that, of that, you know, of that K wire. Um, so, you get that K wire position, you know, perfectly down the, down the shaft. Um, if you look at that image on the, on the, um, on the right of the screen, you know, I, I would say that, well, first of all, the, the screws, you know, quite buried. Um, so, and it looks like a solid screw, which is good, but, uh, there's, there's a few issues. Um, one it's buried, which can be very hard to get out. Um, if you have to go back, even non-union, you need to get a screw out. So, I would not bury screws. Um, I would, you know, um, keep them, you know, on the, um, on the cortex. Secondly, they might've, you know, lagged by technique here. Um, but you know, you have a, a, a fracture that you want to compress and they put a fully threaded screw in here. Um, you want right. you know, to, you know, you want to avoid doing that. You part, use a partially threaded screw. Um, pretty much we all use partially threaded screws, but, you know, if they were, if they over drilled the, the, um, you know, fracture up into that point, then I, you know, I can't criticize them that much. That's fine. But, you know, I don't know if they did that. Um, but this would be like the worst thing to do is just put a solid screw across it. Um, and not, you know, not do that. Then you're just kind of fixing the displacement or, you know, you're not compressing anything, um, across the fracture site. And then, you know, you want to try to get the screw as big as you can. Right. So, so, um, to fill the, to fill the canal. How do you do that? Well, you know, you have the K wire in there, you over drill the K wire with a drill bit. Um, and then you tap sequentially, right? You start, you know, you start with a four or five tap. Um, and, you know, you kind of see how that fills both radiographically and feel, you know, are you when, with every turn of the tap? Are you, do you see the foot move? Do you see the foot kind of, you know, cause so you can imagine, let's say you're working on the, you're working on the right foot and you're, you know, you're screwing the tap, clockwise and then you you know you see kind of the bone torquing well probably has a good cortical kind of good cortical fit right um and then you 
you know, put that, you know, kind of, kind of tap in either just, you, know, you measure sort of the distance that you want your screw to be keeping in mind that you want all the threads to be across the fraction. Right. So, um, because if you do that then you know, you're going to get, you're going to get compression. If you have it, if the threads are crossing the fracture, then you're not going to get compression, which, which is what you want to avoid. So you want to choose a long enough screw that the threads are across a fracture, the biggest diameter screw that you can to have, you know, good strength and fit and a short enough screw. So like this screw is too long, right? You can see how it's hitting the cortex, both on the, on the oblique there and the lateral, you want the screw to be way shorter than this, right? So threads across the fracture and screw that goes only to the point where the metatarsal is straight and not where it starts curving laterally there. You know, as you can see how that metatarsal has a little bit of a curve. You don't want to put a, a straight, really stiff screw in a bone that's curved because you're just going to, you're going to displace the fracture, right? When it hits the cortex. Um, right. And also you can actually penetrate the, the wall there, the medial wall, which would be bad too. Right. And you have a straight, you know, kind of a, um, you know, um, a uh, um, stress, you know, stress point. So you don't want to do that. So this is just some, those are just some tidbits. So why, and you're saying, so one of the things you said was high and tight. Why, why do you want the screw to be high? Is that just the best bone, um, like just the best bony contact or why, why do you want the screw to be high and tight? No, it's the best, it's the best screw trajectory, right? Oh, so the best screw trajectory. yeah, so this one, you can see it's not, you know, it's definitely not tight against the, the cuboid there, right? Um, it's, it's actually, you know, looks like it's too lateral, right? So it's aiming too medial. If you aim, if you started the screw a little bit more medial here, you would have had the better trajectory of aiming a little bit more lateral. So you avoid abutting the medial cortex and then displacing the fracture, right? Um, right. And then the same thing, you know, on the lateral, you want it high because, you know, it looks like here it's hitting the dorsal cortex as opposed to kind of being a little bit down the shaft, you know, uh, a little bit more centered. But again, if you, you know, in this case, you would have got away with it probably if you took a shorter screw, because then you, you know, you wouldn't be hitting the cortex, but in general, close to the fifth metatarsal cuboid, you know, articulation, um, you know, as, as, that's the tight and the, and the high on the lateral. And what is the difference between using a cancellus versus a, um, versus just using a solid screw? Well, it's not, it's not really a cancellus versus, I mean, a, a cannulated or, you know, like a, um, like a, non-solid like a cannulated screw yeah. versus using a solid more more it really for 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 strength so you know the last thing you want to happen is that screw to break because you know, if that screw bends or breaks it is a pain in the butt to get out if if the fracture doesn't heal so you want to screw that you potentially can leave forever and not take out and not worry as much about it breaking so much harder to break a solid screw than a cannulated screw okay and, and and you typically you just try to fill the canal size up with whatever is you know whatever it taps to whatever it can get the best fit. So if it happens to be, you know, a six five screw versus a four five versus a three five, you just go with, with whatever you can get the most um, cortical fit. Is that right? Yeah, and usually it's like a four five or five five. Um, you know, like like a KD. You know, who had who actually had one of these and and had revision surgeries on these. Um, you know, he might have a bigger screw that fits his canal, but you know, for me, if it was me, it'd probably be a four or five or five, five. Um, and then, you know, the nice thing about that, like, is that if you go back in, you know, the revision surgery, sometimes it doesn't heal. Um, you know, one thing that you can do similar to kind of like a tibia fracture non-union, you can do an exchange nail, you can do an exchange screw and you upsize the screw to a, to a higher diameter. Yeah. Yeah, and that's um that was actually gonna be the next before you you know wrap up here in a second. That was gonna be the next thing that I asked was uh was uh any any non union tips. I know I did one of these with one of my attendings and uh we ended up using some bone graft um to fill the non union side. So I wonder if that's the thing that you use in, in your practice or if you've seen it used or if you have any other tips besides, you know, of course, you know, opening up the non well, it do you open up the non union side or do you just ream? That that may be another thing to ask you as well. Um, I've seen it done in, in a few ways. I mean, it, it, you fix it, it doesn't heal. There's a few options. I mean, you can, 
certainly, you know, take, depending on how you fix it, you can take the, the screw off, the, rather the screw out, um, and you can open, you know, um, bone graft, um, maybe use some, you know, um, iliac, iliac crest um, aspirate, some BMAC, um, you know, some DBM. Um, and then you can put a compression plate on it if you want. Um, my probably uh, way, approach would typically be, you know, take the screw out, um, make a tiny, make a small incision uh, at the fracture site um, and put some, um, put some BMAC with some DBM. Um, Cause it's really, there's not much room there. It's kind of usually like there's, it's not like a big gap where you have room for, you know, a lot of bone grafts. So, you know, BMAC uh, combined with DBM tends to be, tends to be effective and then upsize the screw um, and compress, compress across there. Okay, cool. Yeah. I think those are all um, good solid tips and different techniques to use to be treat, to treat these. Uh, the other, treat by the, these the other, the other, the other thing, but you know, I've seen, I mean, people put, um, plates on because typically, you know, the, the, the area of non-union tends to be lateral and plantar. And you get some plantar gapping and some people think that, you know, you put a plate, if you can position it lateral and plantar, that's ideal. Um, and some studies show that there's some pretty good, pretty good union, union rates by doing that. The other option, which I haven't seen much, but it's certainly, you know, a little bit out of the box option um, is there's some newer, well, it's not really newer material, but there's some um, you know, staples that are, that are, that are used in a lot of, oh, I've seen that. um, and the amount of compression that you can get in a night and all, and this is a whole nother talk, but the amount of compression <laughs> you can get, you can get a night and all staple. Um, some studies show it's like 50 times the amount of compression that you can get in a lag screw. So really, you know, that, that, that could be an option too. Um, and I certainly would consider that in, in a, in a challenging case for sure. <laughs> 